Hello, uh, dear viewers. You are watching program Canadian Politics uh, from Umid Television Network. I am your host, Akhtar Nasim. Today, we are happy to have uh, Madame Barbara Vivian uh, with us in our studios. And uh, she's running uh, for Papino Riding. Uh, she belongs to Black Quebecwa. How are you, Madam, this morning? Fine, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. And uh, there are a few questions uh, uh, regarding the politics and because you are running for the Papino riding. And I think uh, uh, and believe that uh, you will answer our questions. With pleasure. First of all, that uh, you were born uh, in Haiti. You came to Canada. Uh, when did you join uh, the Bloc Quebecois? Uh, maybe uh, formally in uh, around 2005 or four. But I was a non-sovereignist, you know, from the beginning when Parti Québécois was, uh, was, uh, had started. So, and I had participated in everything that, uh, all the movements we had then. Okay. And uh, in 2006, you got elected. But in 2008, you could not defend your membership in the parliament. What was uh, the reason? Well, you know, uh, this was... Uh, this is, I should say, uh, an old uh, liberal uh, bastion, I could say, in, uh, in Papineau. And uh, it was a big surprise that we won over a, min a then minister of uh, foreign affairs, which was uh, Pettigrew. So, and we won by a very small margin, 900 votes. And so the time after, they brought us the son of former uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. So it was sort of somebody that had just, you know, beaten the, the, the old uh, crowd. And uh, it was a bit more difficult since we had a big name facing us. Okay. And uh, it is believed that uh, the sitting member is uh, stronger uh, than the other contestants or candidates. How do you take it? Well, <laughs> how can we take it? I mean, uh, when you go in election, you know, you either win or lose. Just one of us will have it, and I don't think there are many things to say about it. It's just uh, the way things are. Somebody comes with uh, different uh, things, and like I said this time, we had a known name, and it made the whole difference in the constituency where they won for years before. So now it's a bit more equilibrated, but... Even then, we don't know it's really tight. Okay. And uh, I would like to know that uh, is your block uh, countrywide, I mean Canada-wide, or only limited to Quebecois? Yeah, it's a party that is dedicated to Quebec only because we were, and we are still very unhappy about the way things are going in the Federation for Quebec people, which means that we want out of Quebec and, you know, considering we were never given the proper attention we deserved, then we decided to have a party that would deal only with Quebec matters and saying that we were there to protect Quebec's interest, you know, uh, considering that we're not an independent country yet, but in Quebec we're working towards that. Okay. And uh, while going uh, through your profile, uh, I came to uh, know that uh, you have been uh, the vice chairperson of the Committee on the Canadian Mission in Afghanistan. What is uh, this mission all about? Would you like to say something to our viewers? Well, as you know, uh, Canadians and mostly Quebecers don't want that mission to continue. Okay. And we, 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 had, we even had a vote, a uh, uh, majority vote, <coughs> from the... Uh, from the, um, uh, not the government, the other parties saying, we want out. So now, then they had to put condition as uh, how are we going to retire? And then, uh, you know, to make things work, there was a mission that was uh, done so that people could study that. I, actually, I didn't sit a lot on that because then we had to go in election, which is what we've been doing most in the last uh, four or five years. Yes. Uh, you have been uh, very busy during uh, these days because these are the election days. And uh, how are your corner meetings going on? 
meetings, are, as far as elections are concerned? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it's the usual. We go see people. We have uh, interviews, and uh, we call people on the phone, and we have a whole a team working on it as well, so it's a big, it's a big project, and uh, in a very short time, so it's very busy. Everybody is tired now, but things are doing going well. Okay, and uh, since 2008, uh, you are well contacted with your people. Yeah, well, I mainly uh, my occupation was to be vice president of the party, which I seem. I still am, which means, uh, you know, I go out a lot all over uh, Quebec to meet with, with our members, and uh, we even wrote a book and uh, many things. And our offices are here in Papineau, so I was always also in the constituency. Okay. And uh, what do you think and how do you take your party that uh, are they going to uh, achieve uh, more seats than the last election? Oh, well, you know, this thing you, you only know at the end. You know, as you see the situation now with the uh, NDP coming up, nobody knows what's going to happen. But we have, we are confident that in Quebec, we'll still be number one. Okay. And uh, uh, what is the Quebec was a special agenda for this election for the country? Well, actually, it's the same thing we said before. We're there to protect Quebec's interests and make sure the federal government doesn't leave us out in many subjects that interest us. For example, when uh, we are saying that Bill 101 has to be, it is actually, in Quebec, saying that we should speak French, work is in French, for example. But there are many people working in the federal uh, charts who okay. don't like banks, uh, insurance companies, etc., which means they can speak in the language they want. And we want the, the federal government to uh, recognize that and make it possible for people to live and work, especially not live. People can live in the language they want to. But as far as work is concerned, to, you can't force somebody to speak another language which is not theirs. Things like that. And for immigrants, for example, uh, uh, reunification <coughs> is Quebec's, but it's the federal government that has to say whether or not somebody is coming. And we would want that to be under only Quebec's uh, jurisdiction because we have specific needs. And even we've seen that even when the government says it, it will do things for immigrants to come, look what, what they've done to the to the, um, blah, 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 blah. the people that are up there, you know, on the island, they left there. Uh, I can't remember the name <laughs> of the country. No what, they don't give proper consideration. They seem to think that everybody is coming here to cheat or not have the proper rights and things like that, which is not true. These people are really trying to free a country where they're not, uh, they're not accepted properly. Okay. And uh, what's your own agenda for the people of your riding? Yeah, well, you know, here we have many problems. Social housing is one of them. You know, people live in poor conditions. It is one of the poorest uh, constituency in the country. And, and it's important. It doesn't mean that everybody is poor, but some people are really in a low level uh, of economic situation. And what we're saying is that the government should put more money in social housing. We're having condos built, which is fine for people who can afford them. But we can't just say, okay, let's build, let's build uh, condos and these people will go elsewhere. Where would they go? So it's a government responsibility to take care of them. So that's one big issue. Integration of immigrants is another good one because it's not just saying you should speak French. It's giving the people the means to do it and giving them job on top, you know, especially. That's the best way to integrate in a country. And if you don't get these conditions, it's, uh, no, it's no use. And I've seen people who are much better off in their original countries coming here 20 years after, you know, nothing has happened. And it's, it not only is it sad, it is a loss of competence. It is, uh, it is not, I, I don't accept it. Okay. And uh, madame, uh, what uh, would you uh, give the message to the viewers of our television? 
Well, to tell them, you know, I've come also from an immigrant. I'm an immigrant. I say former immigrant, obviously, after you're in a country more than 10 years, you're no longer an immigrant. You're part of it. And I think they should take uh, their place, you know, claim and uh, make themselves heard so that, you know, they don't need somebody to go and talk for them. They should be able to go and talk for themselves because the experience they have, what their people are living, they are the only ones who can speak about it. And I think it's too bad that people stay outside thinking it's not my concern, it is our concern. That's where we live, that's where we pay taxes. And as such, we have to get up and speak up and not wait for our children to do. We should do this yeah. and of course for the children, let, let's hope it will be better, but at least people should be present. Okay, madam, I wish you good luck in uh, the upcoming elections and we are highly thankful to you for being with us in our studios. It's a pleasure, thank you. Uh, dear viewers, uh, you are watching program Canadian Politics. Till next week, goodbye. Take care.